I would probably say, you know, um, these are going to be talking about like, these are like real crimes. Like, I would imagine that there is probably, it, this is probably going to be triggering to some people. I would assume that this is going to be triggering for sure. These are real cases, uh, real, this is real. These are real people and real crime that has happened. So just be aware. Okay. Okay, here we go. The drama began shortly after the Frederick Police Department received a call from Nicole Atkinson, the best friend of Shannon Watts. She had arranged to drive Shannon into town that same day for a pregnancy checkup, but there was no answer when she knocked at the door, nor any response to her text messages or phone calls. After noticing her shoes were still at the front door, she became concerned and called 911. Nicole? Yes. Okay. What's going on? So, my friend, um, we were out of town for a business trip this weekend. All right. And I dropped her off at 2 o'clock this morning. She's 15 weeks pregnant. Oh, she no. wasn't feeling well. And she had a doctor's appointment this morning at 9. And I told her to let me know if she needed me to take her. She's got two little girls. I called. I texted. Her car's in the garage. Her shoes she wears every single day are right in the front door. How you doing? Uh. You seen your neighbors today? No. What's Chris's phone number? Phone. Chris's phone number is... Hey, Chris, Officer Coonrod for the police department. Pretty good. So, do you have any idea where your wife is? Right. Well, my concern is her car is here. They're saying she is diabetic. I don't want her... If she's upstairs and can't respond. Okay. About how far out are you? Okay. All right. He said like five minutes. It's not a sure sign of guilty conduct, yet the fact that Chris made the officer wait for his return would have most likely alerted some minor suspicion. Oh. In normal circumstances, a husband receiving a call from the police saying they were concerned about the safety of their pregnant wife and children, in most cases, would have given them permission to immediately kick the door down. It's a truly somber awareness to know that the man stepping out of the car had only a very short time ago dumped his infant daughter's bodies into an oil tank and buried his pregnant wife in a shallow grave. I'm sorry. Hold on. Did I miss something? Okay. Hold on. Okay. ...and to immediately kick the door down. It's a truly somber awareness to know that the man stepping out of the car had only a very short time ago dumped his infant daughter's bodies into an oil tank and buried his pregnant wife in a shallow grave. Scott, how you doing? How's it going? So this is the only vehicle she would have? Only one that, yeah. She would drive? Okay. The familiar routine for anyone checking for someone's presence inside a house, whether it be an emergency or otherwise, is to immediately call out to them for instantaneous reassurance. Chris remains silent, but instead feels the need to examine his wife's car before subtly sneaking through the internal garage door. He then disappears for one minute and seven seconds before letting the neighbors and police officer inside. Oh, wow. Only Chris so will guilty. know what he carried out during that time period, but it's safe to assume that his curious behavior was not going unnoticed, yeah. made evident by the unsettled gaze of Nicole as he opens the door. Oh, you guys can't see her gaze, but like she looks, she's like, wow, this is sus. That's what she was thinking. Oops, sorry. Opens the door. Matter of fact, come in, Chris. There were multiple key moments captured from inside the house, which may not have been noticed immediately by the officer, but would have no doubt been gathered by forensics upon further investigation. What is it? The most overt peculiarity was Chris's interaction with his phone. The guise of his thumb movement would have given the impression he was texting someone, which would have seemed very peculiar, as the normal response would be to frantically call people rather than text given the circumstances. Uh -huh. Hindsight gives us a clearer picture of Chris's introversion, which is that he was most likely using his phone to avoid eye contact and progressive dialogue with the officer. What time do you leave the day? What time do I leave there? Come no, here. here. Uh, usually between 5.30 and 6. All right. More Shannon here then? Yes. Oh, he's guilty. Does she usually watch the kids or do you have daycare watch uh, them? She, she usually watch the kids if they're not at school. Okay. You guys have any kind of issues? Marital issues, or? We're going through separation. You are? Now, how's that going? Uh, it's, it's going civil for the most civil. part, or? <laughs> Why did he laugh? 
Oh, this is awkward. Additionally, we are presented with the subtle cues of Chris's forethought cover story, being that his wife simply ran off with the kids after a breakdown in the marriage. All I got was blankies, they're gone. Um. They're blankies they sleep with, they don't leave anywhere without them. Good. The rest of Chris's conduct could be analyzed and dissected in various ways, and it would be easy to pick at certain oddities in body language and link them with signs of guilt. Yet, without the hindsight we have now, his behavior could just as easily be linked with an innocent man who is understandably concerned and frantic over the disappearance of his family. His very conservant neighbor, however, had the perceptual advantage of knowing Chris on a semi-personal level, and could analyze his kinesics in a far more accurate manner than the police officer. You just want to go talk to him? I'm Get his info real quick. Ah. No. Oh, he says he's not ri acting right at all. Not at all. Right. To be completely honest with you, my wife and I were kind of wondering when she was on vacation if something happened because I've heard them full out screaming at each other at the top of their mom and he gets crazy. Does he? Um, and that's pretty recently? Yeah. He doesn't look worried. He looks like he's trying to cover his tracks. Ooh. He's only quiet, real subdued. He's over here telling, the, telling you three times what he took out, what he did, what he did, what yeah, he did. He's very, he's very, very much much he never talks. So the fact that he's over here blabbing his mouth makes me kind of suspicious. This was just after the moment he had shown both Chris and the officer his surveillance. Man, I really don't know where to put myself sometimes. What about up here? Surveillance footage of that same morning, capturing only Chris leaving the house after loading multiple unidentified things into his truck. Yeah, we can pick up cars coming this way. I get anything coming this way and making this turn. So, and usually at night I pick up the car pulling the ear turn. So, unless they pulled right here, yeah. but I would have caught her walking out. Although not fully incriminating, as Shannon and the kids could have left through the back entrance, this was an extremely detrimental piece of Ooh. evidence, and would have no doubt been extolled by forensics and made Chris an immediate prime suspect. The following day, Chris, for some bizarre reason, agreed to be interviewed by two separate news stations, where he came across as extremely unimpassioned and detached from the alarming nature of the situation. Like, when I got home yesterday, it was like a ghost town. Like, she wasn't here. Kids weren't here. I have no idea like where they went. Right now it's you got canine units, the sheriff's department, everybody's like they're they're doing their best right now to figure out like if they can get a scent. If she wasn't here, like where did she go? Like once I got here it was like, all right, who can I call? I called her three times, texted her about three times just to say, you know, what's going on? Like if she's vanished, like I want her back so bad. I want those kids back so bad. Right now I don't even want to just like throw anything out there like I hope that she's somewhere safe right now and with the kids. Last night I wanted I, I wanted that knock on the door. I wanted to see that I wanted to see those kids just run in run in, just just barrel rush me and just give me a hug and knock me on the ground. That's why last night was just horrible. I couldn't do it. it I just I'm hoping that somebody sees something or somebody knows something and comes forward. Shannon, Bella, Celeste, if you're out there just just, just come back. Like if somebody has her, just please bring her back. Like, I need to just see come everybody. back. I need to see everybody again. This house is not complete with, like, without anybody I here. I miss you. Please bring her back. This could have been construed as shock trauma, where a person will turn numb and retreat into themselves as a means of escape. Yet the viewers watching this live from home were probably thinking what we as the retrospective audience already know. He was called in for questioning four hours later. Somebody saw something. Somebody knows where these kids are. And I keep saying, kids, I'm sorry. Kids in your life. I know you're going through a lot, so I'm not going to keep you here all night. Just tell me exactly what you remember, and I'll take notes about where we can go. Okay. So this 1.40 a.m. Let me switch chairs. Okay. Because when they come knocking, I said, I'll probably come knocking. I got music. 
interrogation. One of the oldest and most commonly used techniques is for the interrogator to sit between the door and the suspect. This is for the purpose of heightening the feelings of isolation and dependence. It's an indirect subliminal message, letting Chris know that the only way out of that room is through the detective. It's an excellent tool for stripping away confidence, Take thus increasing confidence. the telling signs and body language when information is fabricated. 4 a.m., that's when my alarm goes off for work, and I am just get dressed, brush my teeth, everything I do upstairs. Okay. About 4.15, that's when I get back, slide right into bed next to her, and start having a conversation with her about having the house, the house up for sale, and talking about it, Except, like actually going, proceeding with the separation. Okay. And obviously it gets pretty emotional, like we're talking about, you know, like we felt this, the disconnection was there, like falling out of love and trying to stay together, maybe just for the kids' sake, but we're realizing that doing like our homework, it's not, most of the time that's not gonna work. Yeah. Gets ready for work, goes so to work. So when I got home, I opened the garage door and we went inside the house and looked everywhere, Shanann, Bella, and Celeste, nowhere to be found. Shanann's wedding ring's on her nightstand, her phone's still on the couch, her purse is still there, the medicine for the kids is still there, the car and the car seat is still there, and there's no sign of them anywhere. Well, that doesn't make sense, does it? If I was they hoping left that, him, I left all the lights on the house, I was stuff. hoping that I'd get a knock on the door. But yeah, nothing back. happened. Yeah, but nothing happened. What do you think happened? At first, I really thought maybe she was just at somebody's house. Truthful, short, and direct, yeah. untruthful, but long, and detailed. Today, like with oh. the onslaught of all the cars, I mean, all the police cars, all the news, all the canine units, it's making me lean the other direction about someone took her. Okay. But it's just, if someone took her, it would have to have been someone she knew. Because there's, there's no sign of anything like being disturbed, broken. Mm -hmm. But like that's the way I'm leaning now. At first, I thought for real she was just decompressing somewhere. Just, I mean, I thought she was safe, mm -hmm. even though everything in the house was left there. But now it's just after the day with the news crews and everything, it's just it feels more the other direction, and it's freaking me out. Discussing Shannon's friend circle, work life, phone history, computer history. On that night, I told I woke that morning, early that morning, mm -hmm. I told her like the disconnection is it's there like it's not going away like the connection we had when in the beginning mm -hmm. it's not there anymore it's okay. like i don't feel like the love we have is there anymore okay. so you killed her and it's just like i don't feel like i mean if we want to stay together for the kids i'm not sure if that's going to work mm -hmm. like bringing us what you told him yes okay like Having another baby and bringing us in this relationship, do you think this is going to work mm -hmm. with us being together? Or separation, I think, is going to be the best possible route for us. And that's when like all the crying and everything proceeded. And it was just it was very hard just, just to talk talk about that. Mm -hmm. But I needed to do it face to face. Okay. And I needed like I needed to see her face like wow, I did it. He's I saying it. like a lot because he's nervous. Oh, whatever. I needed to be I face think. to face and be able to see her and know that she was going to be at least reciprocating back to me. Oh, what did she say? She said that it was, I mean, it was, she wants, she wanted to kind of work on it, mm -hmm. but if that's the way I was feeling, then she respects that. Okay. Uh, 1 p.m. I'm now on my way home to check on my family. Uh, is that just because you're worried with, based on the conversation yeah. with Nicole? Had the police contact you by then? No. Okay. Yeah. She, I arrived. I'm sorry, guys. But uh, Nicole says she was probably going to call the cops. Okay. All right. Now, his wife, so it sounds like Nicole's pretty worried. Uh, two mm -hmm. kids worried. and one unborn so child. I, I, once, once she couldn't get anything out of her and nothing was going on in the house, I was like, all right, I got to go home. The sharp and sudden change of angle from baseline questioning to direct confrontation would normally make an innocent person refute or at least challenge the statement. There would also be a brief pause, as they would need time to process the allegation due to its perplexity. A guilty individual would already be in a defensive state of mind, uh -huh. and would normally True. respond in a hastily modus. Instead of refuting the remark, they would accept it, but try and explain its actuality in a defensive manner. But it sounds like Nicole was more worried. Yeah, because like 
most of like if she doesn't text me, like I understand that. Okay. Like sometimes that happens. Okay. But for her not to get back to her okay. gr direct sales group, okay. that was very unorthodox. Okay. So then they're they're at home. Um, police officers there. Mm -hmm. um, then walk me through that. So as we go through the house, we're Did all you immediately go through the house. Oh, like I open the garage door and I just I just go into the house. I'm, I'm, I'm looking, like I just go in the garage door and I'm looking. Is the police officer saying, hey, let me talk to you for a minute? No. No, okay. What's, no. The, what's the vibe like? I just, I just, I go up there, shake his hand, but I'm like opening the garage door at the same time. Okay. And then I go through and then they're waiting at the front door. I go in, open that up, and then they come in. Oh, so they didn't go in the garage door with you? Okay. Well, they, they went in the garage, they didn't come in the way I did. All right. So then... Because he shut the door behind everybody him. Everybody goes in. I think of the... And at four o'clock, that's when um, cause the neighbor, cause the neighbor, I was the officer. I went over to the neighbor's house to see if he saw anything. And who that neighbor was I think it was the officer. Cause okay. he just went over there. Um, yeah. and then that's when the uh, oh, neighbor God. called him back over to show him he um, he had some stuff from the other night. Okay. Kind of show him like whatever he had, and that, that put motion on it. Okay. Four p.m. Police check neighbor security footage and question them as well. Okay, have we talked about that? Is that where we're, we're, mm -hmm. okay. where we're at? Uh, anything else about that? No, I mean, it just shows Nicole dropping her off, but her not walking up, and it shows me loading my truck up and about the time that told you I left. Okay. Um, can we talk about something that's kind of hard to talk about? Um, so when I work investigations like this, I have to keep an open mind on everything. Oh. Okay. part of keeping an open mind is listening to you talk about your wife and your marriage mm -hmm. and the day she goes missing is the day that you guys have marital discord okay so you can understand yeah. what i'm thinking about you yeah what do you think about that my light is uh, too bright makes me sick of my stomach honestly like i know like i've talked to a few of my friends is like you know this does not look good on you i'm like i know so much better it's like People that, if people knew that we were having marital issues, they're gonna look at me, especially with the way everything looks. And it honestly just makes yeah, me it looks of bad for you. This is something that I would never do. Ever. I, I, I know, like, you have to look at every, every vantage point. This is something I would never do to my kids or my wife at all. This is what is known as the pause technique. After the suspect answers a question, the interrogator will remain silent while maintaining eye contact. This physical demeanor gives off the subtle cue that he expects more information to be divulged and may already know more than the suspect realizes. Oh, oh that's so awkward. I'm not sure like what I could do to, like, to make people believe that just because if they, if they knew or have marital discord, they would automatically look at me. But there's no, I would harm anybody in my family. At all. You're a liar. Yeah, drill him with your eyes. I know we were having marital discord and we had that conversation that morning. And then she goes, we have no idea where she is or the kids. I promise you that I had nothing to do with any of that. Don't know wall him. Oh, it's so awkward. It hurts. Oh, God. Are you telling me the truth? Oh, no. Why should I believe you? A truthful individual will normally respond to this question with a question, such as, why are you asking me that? Or, what's going on here? They will often protest the aggressive nature of the Inquisition, or give a short and forceful response. Really? I'm a very trustworthy person, and the people that do know me, they know how I'm a calm person, I am not an argumentative person. We have a response time. I am a person who is never going to be abusive or physical in any kind of relationship. I would never harm my kids. I would never harm my wife. I mean, you can talk. I mean, any, you can talk to any of my friends, any of her friends. They know me. They know 
I'm a low key guy that's quiet. So I'm I'm not about confrontation. I'm not about anything that elevates to that level. I mean, you can like if someone like yells at me, screams joining. at me, I just take it and thanks for the donors and members of this by the well, wayside and get it back to where it's cool. Like, just a cool conversation to where like none of that none of that gets to that height. Because I am not that person. I've never been that person. We oh we hit a minute almost. Hmm. Well that's awkward. Passive mm -hmm. disapproval. Would you take a polygraph? Sure. What's a polygraph? Okay. Let's take a little break. I'm gonna come back in here because I have a lot more questions for you. How are you feeling? Look at that picture. <gasps> What's the picture? She's always the one that's just like, she's off. She's either go or sleep. She's always the one growling. She's, she's always been, she's a tiger. Bella, she's the calm, the mother in oh, one. Life she's the one that's always, Are you okay? Are you okay? Are you fine? Okay. She's just, she's just the sweetest little girl. She's the one that favors me more, and Celeste is the one that favors Sinan more. Sickening. I remember when they wore that dress. She just wore that dress not too long ago. Not a button the back of it so I could get her pajamas on. She's like, no, daddy, button. I got button. I got button. I'm done a lot of those spaghetti strap dresses. She likes long dresses. She was a girly girl. Was. She was the girly girl. Captions? I gotta find them, right? I gotta find them, right? I need your help. When we find the guy who took him, what do you think we should do? Oh. This is what is known as a behavior provoking question. An innocent person will usually give what is known as a draconian response. They will immediately respond with the harshest sentence possible for the crime they are falsely being accused of committing. A deceptive individual will often give an equivocating response. This means that they will fragmentize and divert from the question to a certain degree as a means to avoid responding to the query in its entirety. They're going to come home safe, correct? <gasps> when you find the guy. When we find the guy, they're going to come home. Oh, not safe. Life in prison would be the, that's what I would, that's what I would think with two kids that are involved. He's seeking What if he hurt them? Yeah, what if he hurt them? Did they pop, did, did, I'm not sure if like that penalty is even Use, is it used in Colorado? I am not even sure what is the death penalty. Okay. Um, I mean, like, if these kids are not alive, like, there's no... These kids. There's nothing you can do to, to cope with that, to make me cope with that, if those kids are not okay. Those kids. Can, can we keep talking about some complicated things? Sure. Some things that are going to make you uncomfortable? No, that's fine. Okay. You've done very good in talking to me about this really hard conversation you guys had, okay? Very good. That's sometimes hard. And I understand why sometimes someone in your position says, uh, Passive doesn't want to tell me about that. Because please go help me find my kids and you don't need to know about my, my marriage argument, okay? So I gotta say, you've done very good at that. Um, and I need you to keep doing that. So I need to ask you about um, your marriage and uh, infidelity. 
Sure. Okay, tell me about it. Yeah, I have never cheated on my wife. Okay. And I fully suspect she has never done that to me. Oh, okay. The interrogator was already aware that Chris was cheating on his wife with a woman by the name of Nicole Kessinger. He had <gasps> handed over his phone earlier on this interview for what he thought was for the purpose of going through his and his wife's mutual contacts to look for potential suspects. Judging by Chris's bold-faced denial, it's safe to assume he deleted all of his correspondence with Nicole beforehand. Yet he was most likely unaware that the FBI have programs that can recover every single piece of digital exchange sent from a device even long after it's deleted. Highly trained investigator. You hear that, here, chat? Right? I see pictures the of FBI you. The FBI's gonna see your nudes. Mm -hmm. And I see you standing before me now. Okay, uh -huh. okay. you've gotten pretty fit. Yeah. Yeah. You can imagine when guys start cheating or want to cheat, that's what happens. Yes, so tell me about it. So I did not cheat on my wife. Okay. What do I do to help you walk out of this room and not look like the person who's responsible? You have to trust me. I had nothing to do with these, with this, with this act never mentioned of like violence. evil cruelty, whatever has happened <gasps> here. Because my love for these two girls and my wife, like, I don't want anything to happen to them. I've never wanted anything to happen to them. Why is happen highlighted there? No matter if me and my wife separate or not, or divorce or anything. Oh, because something I never has wished harm happened. on anybody, on a They're human gone. being in general. Okay. Like, never wished harm. Just seeing that picture, like, I need them, I, I want them just to run through that front door and just grab me, mm -hmm. or just bear, just tackle me, knock me to the floor, bust my head up, I don't care. The amount of love I have for my family is exponential, and I, it's never going to die. Okay. And they need, I want them back. Okay. I have to have them back. Start of confrontation. It's time. When you walk out of this room, there's nothing I can say to a room full of police officers that's going to convince them that you have nothing to do with it. Thomas, this. I'm uh, so sorry you, you didn't sleep! They, I, I know it all that all of it. Yeah. Here's a guy who didn't call 911. Have a good day at work. Who woke his wife, wife up at a ridiculous hour because he was so guilty about something that he had to get it off his chest and say, I don't love you anymore, I'm leaving you. That didn't go well. Okay, so what happened? She told me she wanted me to wake her up before I left. That's why I didn't just wake her up, like, just to tell her this. Like, I woke her up. That's what she wanted to do, and we talked. Like, usually at 4 a.m., I wake up, I go down and work out. This day, I wanted to talk to her about this. And on this day, she died. How convenient. Pause technique. Detective fixed his gaze on photo. That's crazy. I love these girls. I love these girls so much. And this picture right here, Celeste and Bella, those are my life. I helped make those kids. I helped There's make those kids. There's nothing in my life that means more to me than these kids. Nothing. Uh. Kids, that's... That's your life. Minus that's your one. Line line. For sure. That's everything. Like you make kids, they they come first before anything. Kids, spouse, family. Mm. That's what it's always been. Minus ten. For sure. Nothing you've told me tonight makes sense. Ooh. Nothing you've told me tonight feels like the truth. <laughs> Can we start over? Sure. End of confrontation. Tonight's been pretty intense, I can imagine. Where's the right, timer? <laughs> I've, I've slept like two hours last Steve, night, so I'm back. like running on empty right okay, now. Rosie, but, uh, I can see it. So why do I do this? I'm sure you don't mind if we take a break for the night. Um, I'm sure that you are um, feeling some of the pressure from me. Okay. I'm going to commit to you that. We're not going to stop working until we find them. Okay. Okay. Mm. And I want to commit to you that there is going to come a time when you're going to feel this pressure from other people. Mm. I'm not the only one who thinks that there's a possibility you have something to do with this. Like another FBI agent, like pressure, or like this, like 
everyone. Okay. Everyone, everyone okay. he said. The interrogator is clearly <laughs> receptive to Chris's anxiety and endeavors to amplify this emotion before ending the interview. He wants to inflate Chris's apprehension as much as possible for the looming polygraph test that approaches the following day. Tonight when you go home, one of two things is going to happen. You're going to pass out because you're so tired, okay? And that's probably not going to be what happens. Your head's going to go race, okay? Ooh. So tonight when you lay down and your head starts racing, there's going to be things that come to your mind, okay? This always happens, always. It's very natural. You're going to say, I wonder why he asked me that, okay? You're going to say, screw him. How dare he accuse me, okay? You're going to say, I wonder if they've thought of this. Okay? And then you're going to say, I probably should have told him something, or this, or that. Okay? Those are the most common things. Um, when those thoughts come to your head, I want you to call me. And those are beautiful kids. Those kids have a good dad, and I know it. Let's just get a picture of someone for them. Yeah. It's a better one, but it's just, I'm sorry to, Huh? Those kids have a good dad. The following discourse from the officer could be construed as the reframing technique, where an interrogator will try and shift the suspect's view of themselves from negative to positive as a means to lightening the iniquity of their crimes oh and increasing the chances of a confession. However, this is more likely what is known as passive accusation, where the interrogator is almost certain of the suspect's guilt and indirectly accuses and in some manner indignifies the suspect. This is made evident by the high praises the officer gives to Chris Chris for extremely trivial deeds. A lot of dads don't get second pairs of clothes and cook eggs and give them snacks at night. You know, a lot of, a lot of men, that's a woman for it, right? I uh, like to get involved. But you're not that kind of guy. Okay. So can we say that tomorrow at 11 o'clock? Sure. We can do a polygraph? Sure. Here. Um, I appreciate you coming in tonight. Mm -hmm. All right. Give me a few minutes. Um, this is Tammy. Did you meet Tammy yesterday? No, I'm good. Okay. I always do. Hi, Chris. How are you? Is it on this? Yep, I know. It's, I'll explain what that is here in a little bit, yeah. but you don't have to worry. It, it's not on or anything right now. It's not going to It's not going to buzz you or anything. <laughs> Obviously, you're probably nervous about taking today's test. Honestly, I would think something is wrong with you if you weren't nervous about coming mm -hmm. in here to take a polygraph. Yeah. Even if people are like, I don't have anything to hide, it is nerve-wracking. Oh, and yeah. I have taken tons of polygraphs, obviously, in my training. Um, I went to 10 weeks for training. I've been a polygrapher about. Ah, my cam. Maybe over here it's safe. Sorry, I, I was trying to move my cam and I missed this. I would think something is wrong with you if you weren't nervous about coming in here to take a polygraph. Even if people are like, I don't have anything to hide, it is nerve wracking. But I have taken tons of polygraphs, obviously, in my training. Um, I went to 10 weeks for training. Ooh. I've been a polygrapher about, for about five years. Um, I went to the best school in the country. Best so school I want you to have confidence in the fact that if you had nothing to do with this disappearance, like we're going to find that out today. If you so had nothing I, to I do with this. I have the best this. training that they offer in the United States. Um, I we <laughs> use the most validated testing. Best um, training, best no procedure. way I'm going to ask you the question. Oh, so he's probably shaking me, in his you boots. To do with this, I will be able to show them that today. This is psychological pressure disguised as reassurance. Yeah. It's not a routine procedure during the pretest phase of a polygraph Amazing. exam. Yet this technique will be used when the suspect's guilt is almost conclusive. Polygraphs are not a foolproof system and they can be beaten, but with a heightened state of anxiety, it becomes considerably more challenging and unlikely. On this occasion, the polygrapher distinctly applies this technique for maximal effect. There's actually only two ways you can fail a polygraph, okay? So the first way would be to fail to follow my instructions. I'm going to give you a lot of instructions today about how to sit still, how to answer questions, things like that. So if you fail to follow those instructions, you will not pass today's test, okay? Ooh. The second way would be if you choose I'm to I'm nervous lie for today. him. You know, if you did have <laughs> something to do with their disappearance, um, it would be really stupid for you to come in and take a polygraph today. Oh, my so, God. Right? Like, it would be really dumb. Like, you should not be here right now sitting in this chair if you had anything to do with Shanann and the girl's disappearance, okay? <laughs> Polygrapher then establishes the well, yeah, we just, everything the flourished from history? there. Like in 2011, I, pr I proposed to her over in Ocean Isle Beach. Yeah, was, <laughs> and she was just sitting there crying with a little eviction notice, and she had she had, she recorded it. It was really it was an amazing day to see that. And then she left. She was 
she was I was there like she had a midwife for this one so like they actually had me like oh you can stand here and like you know catch her and like but but fluff came out like so fast that like I barely had a chance to go like this and they moved me out of the way because she just like came out. The polygrapher will also obtain the examinee's version of the facts regarding the specific issues under investigation. Like, I was just hoping that I would get that knock on the door for a phone call or a text. I mean, her phone, I mean, they have her phone. Like, hopefully, maybe it's a number I don't know. Hopefully, it's like, you know, like a burner, a burner phone or some, some, kind of, some kind of, like, phone she bought. And she could just text me and call me like, hey, I'm okay. Something. Or just get a knock on the door, and then the kids just run in. I miss like the kids like sitting at the dinner table and like having to tell them to eat their dinner and like I miss them throwing the chicken nuggets at me like I was I just want to find them I want them to come home safe like wherever they are I hope they are safe and I really I really hope they can just come home mm. it makes me feel like all right maybe somebody has her that's not that's not keeping her safe or something terrible has happened. Huh. And that is, that's the nightmare. And what would that terrible thing be? If somebody hurt them. Chris recounts a brief summary of the events and states multiple vague possibilities for his family's disappearance. The polygrapher then starts to elect specific timelines for Chris to give his account on. Um, you said the next thing you know is her getting into bed with you, is that right? I could not felt her getting into bed. We didn't say anything because I just, I just kind of felt it. Okay. Do you know if she was on her phone or like how any of that works? I don't, I don't think she was on her phone. Was she mad at all? I mean, being crying, crying like she was, crying like I was. I mean, yeah, I mean, she was upset. But I mean, it was, it was, it comes with that kind of conversation. In the next moments, you will see another subterfuge of psychological pressure, this time disguised as routine questioning procedure. It's a vastly open-ended question relevant to the crimes under suspicion. These types of questions are common knowledge and easily clarified by the innocent, while the guilty will in most cases have severe difficulty in responding. I know it's time. totally awful to think about, but what are ways, because I need to make sure that you know what I'm talking about, what are ways that you can make someone disappear? Oh. I mean, like, if you're talking about, like, what I've seen, like, on the movies, or, like, how you, like, how people, uh, if you read about other people, I mean, you hire somebody. Like a hitman? Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, yeah. I'm just being honest. Nope, that's oh what my I want. God. That's what I want you to go through all of these He's scenarios. He's freaking out. Because I want you to know for sure what I'm talking about when I say that, you know, asking you if you physically caused her disappearance. Okay, like like you'd hire somebody or you'd have a somebody you know that that would do it. I mean it's like I don't I mean it's hard. And, it's a hard I, know question this, to, and I know this stuff. It's, a hard it's question not hard. I can think of a right. trillion ways to because, get rid of someone. Uh, I didn't I didn't have nothing to do with this disappearance. Right. So like I don't even want to think about like if I, if if you're asking like how I would do it, like I No don't anyone. Know, like anyone how would how would Oh my god, he's freaking out. He's I mean, would, freaking out. Like you caused someone's disappearance by murdering them. Would yes. you agree with that? Yes. So what different physical ways could you cause someone's disappearance through murder? You could stab someone, Stab right? someone, shoot someone. <laughs> him Caution not object. to mention actual causes of death. Um, Wife strangulation, daughter smothered. Is there, I mean... Use a weapon, like gun or a knife. I mean, okay. his voice is cracking so much. You could say it. Say it. You could smother someone. Smother someone. Oh shit! He said it. Uh huh. What else? You strangle someone. You, oh someone. my yeah, god. I mean, oh my god. All that kind of things. I mean, it's hard to even think about that kind of stuff right now. Mm -hmm. You could strangle someone. You could drown someone. Yeah. Yeah. See. You could shock someone to death. Um, you could burn someone alive. Um, what are the ways you can think of? As far as like, like lure them into a trap, I guess. So what do you mean? What? Like you know, like have somebody waiting like around the corner and like. You know, I, sure. Uh, Following answers: hit by a car, kidnapped, locked in a room, poison, beaten into a coma. They're in a coma? Sure. 
Um, wow. So if I ask you that question on the test, Chris, are you going to have any issue with that? About you like, physically causing going through every single one of those? Yeah, like that would be a way right. to cause someone's disappearance. Okay. Uh, no, I, I can definitely, like, I can pass. I mean, I think. You could murder them, you could kidnap them, you could take them to another country, you could, you know, bury them in your backyard, you could, yeah. you could do a million things. There's a ton yeah. of as things. As far as um, trying to conceal them. Yeah. Right? So that no one could find them. Yes. Because at, at this point, she's gone. So when I ask you the question on the test, I'm not asking you about guilt. I'm not asking you about did you make her feel so horrible that she ended up leaving. I'm saying that you were the one that physically caused her to disappear, okay. either by murder, kidnapping, you know, all of those other things okay. that we went through. Okay. You want me to list? You want me to list all those? Like. No, no, no. Okay. You're just gonna say no to that question. Okay. Right? When I ask you if you physically caused Shanann's disappearance, okay. your answer should be what? No. Right. So do you have any issues with that at all? And no. have any question about what I would mean when I was? No, she's I was, so I good. Like, I just like going through all those that. I was, <laughs> That's right. a lot to really think about. Right. Like but trying to figure out, like, how, yeah, that was. Huh? I'm going to have you take a bathroom break. Thank We've you. been in here quite a while. So you're going to be taking what's called a directed lie polygraph. So what that means is there are going to be test questions on the test where I want the DLT. Lie. I know it seems kind of weird, but you're going to know which questions these are, and they're going to be easy to answer. They're all going to start with before 2018. The directed lie test has three types of questions, known truth questions. These are easy questions to answer, such as, are you sitting down? Or are you wearing shoes? They serve two purposes. The first purpose is to provide a baseline reading for when the subject is telling the truth and should elicit very little bodily responses. The second the second purpose is to disconnect the examinee's thought patterns between each question as a means for resetting their cerebration for a more accurate reading. Control questions. These are what the polygrapher just explained to Chris. Whenever she says, before 2018, at the start of a question, Chris will know he is purposely supposed to lie. Each of these questions are deliberately constructed that all answers will be responded with no. Mm. Relevant questions. These relate specifically to the crime being investigated, and the examinee will know that they are supposed to respond truthfully. A guilty subject will show a much stronger reaction to the relevant questions than to the control Does questions. Does he even have they, they been be lying on they've been found due to dead the now. threat posed by the relevant Does he questions. know that they're so I'm gonna say they've been found dead? Did you ever lose your temper with someone you cared about and you're going to say no cuz you're telling a lie. Awesome. Polygrapher then conducts a mock test. Chris is told to lie on the number 3 question. The test is about to begin. Please remain still. Did you write the number one? No. Did you write the number three? No. Did you write the number five? No. This portion of the test is complete. Please remain still while I take the instrument out of operation. Oh, they haven't found yet. Okay. Wait, I'm confused. You can relax. And feel. This is the last time the polygrapher will have any correspondence. Sorry, it's because remember when they were saying like the wife was. Uh, the wife was strangled and the kids were smothered. The lady said smothered and strangled back to back as if she knew that they were smothered and strangled. So that's why I'm, I was a bit confused. With Chris before the real test begins. She gives him an initial compliment in a reassuring tone. You did great. Yeah, that was... You remembered the lie and everything. That was awesome. That was... <laughs> This momentary boost in his confidence is then abruptly ripped away as he receives the following information. So, <laughs> you obviously are a really bad liar. As, as people told you that before, like, the second you tell Oh my like, god! Tell, like, on your face, but... Because it's like, you lied to the number three, like, I don't know if you heard me clicking, but I had to, like, turn down the sensitivity because you're starting to go off the page, so... That is what I need to see as a polygrapher, because that tells me that you know what's wrong to tell a lie. Um, and you're actually having a significant reaction when you lie, so that is awesome. So thank you for being a proper okay, liar. I, I no, that's a good that. thing. That's a good thing. We don't want to be good liars, so thank you for being a horrible liar. Um, and that just shows me that, you know, oh, man, obviously on the test so we're good. asking, you know, significant stuff about your wife. Um, if you're lying to that, it's going to be even 10 times more amplified. So I oh, appreciate I that. Do. I appreciate that very he, much, more than you know. He seems so, so demoralized. That was awesome. And the coolest thing about this is right now, there's only one person in this room that knows what the truth is. And in about five minutes, there's going to be two of us. So that's the coolest part, okay? And then I can go that's share the that coolest part. Okay. okay. Wow. All right, you ready? Let's do it. 
<laughs> okay, okay. Test begins in three, two, one. Do you understand I will only ask you the questions we have discussed? Yes. Regarding Shanann's disappearance, do you intend to answer all of the questions truthfully? Yes. Is your first name Christopher? Yes. Before 2018, did you ever lose your temper with someone you cared about? No. Did you physically cause Shanann's disappearance? No. Oh! Were you born in 1985? <coughs> yes. Before 2018, did you ever say anything out of anger to a loved one? No. Are you lying about the last time you saw Shanann? No. I like that she pauses. Are you now in the state of Colorado? Yes. Before 2018, have you ever wanted to hurt someone to get even with them? No. Do you know where Shanann is now? No. He, you can hear it in his voice when he lies every time. This portion of the test is complete. There's remain still like take the instrument out of operation. All right, how'd you feel? Same, yeah. all of it? Yeah, it was the same to everything. Oh, yeah. Huh? Good. Oh yeah. I hope. Watches videos of his kids. Wait, that's that's so weird. Oh my gosh, I didn't forget part of it, did I? Spill the tea, sis. What's the verdict? So I brought Graham in here because we want to talk to you about the results, okay? Okay. So um, it is completely that clear that you were not honest during the testing, and I think you already know that. Um, he did not pass the polygraph test. Okay. Okay. So now we need to talk about what actually happened. I feel like you're probably ready to do that. Uh, I didn't. I didn't lie to you on that polygraph. I promise. Chris, I'm. 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 Stop. Time. <laughs> Just stop for a minute. Take a deep breath. Just stop. It's I time. Want he you said. To take a deep breath right now. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Hold on. Part three. I didn't lie to you on that polygraph, I promise. Chris, I, I'm, 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 I'm gonna stop. It's time. It's I'm, <laughs> just stop for a minute, take a deep breath. I want you to take a deep breath right now. There's a reason you feel sick to your stomach. And when people hold stuff inside, it makes you physically ill. And I can just tell on your face, I can tell you tell from the second you walked in that you were wanting to just come clean and just be done with this. This is a technique known oh, as so the subtitles. Sorry. Sorry. I'll rewind it a little bit. Okay. Sorry. I was so invested. There's a reason you feel sick to your stomach. And when people hold stuff inside, it makes you physically ill. And I can just tell on your face, I can tell you tell from the second you walked in that you were wanting to just come clean and just be done with this. This is a technique known as social exchange, an interpersonal persuasion strategy in which the interrogator provides the suspect with a psychological reward in return for the information they need. In this case, she's trying to convince Chris that the alleviation of mental weight is a worthy trade for a confession. She does this in a manner that protects she's his self-esteem so cool. by giving him appreciative reinforcements. And I appreciate that because you knew sitting down in that chair that you weren't gonna pass today and you knew I was going to find out because I told you that. And then you continued to say, knowing that you could, at the end, say, you know what? I just need to get this off my chest. Everything that I've just, I told you, I did not lie on this polygraph. I am, I don't know how much I could, I could just tell you right now. Like, I did not. It's, it's, not, I even, it's not even an option right now because you did not pass the polygraph. I so I know you were being deceptive. So 
That's not even an issue, an issue right now. The issue right now is what happened to Shanann, Bella, and Celeste. The following tactic is called wow. the futility technique, That's a building intense. block to induce a sense in a suspect that any resistance on behalf of their Denial cause is, is futile due to the overwhelming evidence against them. This was obviously not the case, as polygraphs are not admissible evidence, and Chris was in fact still free to leave at this point. Wow. That's the issue right now. Chris, okay, so let's talk about that. I know, I know you want to tell us. I, I, can, I can see it in your face. Holding this lie in is going to do nothing for you. I, I know this. Like okay. I'm not like trying to like cover things up. Like yeah, but you kind of are because in in no, it's normal. This is no longer an interview to collect information. The steps of asking questions and receiving answers is over, and the interrogators oh are now God. in the process of leading the suspect into a state of mental exhaustion. The detectives will attentively watch for denials and stop them before they can be voiced. I miss Letting the, the timer. suspect deny his guilt will only increase his confidence and prolong his cerebral stamina. Normal people would do that. Deplete his cerebral Normal stamina. Normal people that make mistake initially are going to go, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't do anything. That's normal. I would expect that. That's a natural reaction that someone's going to initially lie about something like that and then eventually tell the truth. So this is your eventually telling the truth. Wow. Time. She's so this far where, ahead. This is where the rubber meets the road, Chris. Like, don't let this continue any longer, please. Wow. Uh, I'm not trying to make anything continue. Like, I want them back home, like. But you know they're not coming back home. You know that. I don't know in the back of my head. I'm, I hope they come back home. But you know they're not. Chris, Tammy and I are confused. Okay. And here's what we're confused about. Uh huh. Tell him. I told you that we've done some work overnight. Yeah, I told you that we've got a lot of leads. Okay, that wasn't a lie. Uh, we know a lot more than we think. Dossier yeah. technique? The dossier technique oh, dossier. is a variant of the futility technique. The only difference being that the detectives are far more cryptic and often deceptive about the evidence they have. This <gasps> will hint at things in a vague manner no for evidence. the purpose of escalating a suspect's uncertainty. Yeah. Where are they? I don't know where they're at. Where are they? Oh my god, they both are doing the pause technique at the same I time! I do not know where they are at. If I could have my babies back home right now, I would. I want them back. I want everybody back. That is the God's honest truth. Although the detectives want to intensify Chris's psychological he stress levels, they do them. not That's want him to become that. reactively agitated, as this could lead him to objecting and resisting every step of the way, and the interrogation will never get off the ground. It also significantly increases the chances of him requesting legal counsel and ending the interrogation outright. This elicits the interrogator to change approach and utilize what is known as the <gasps> ego up technique, oh where the detective will build on the self-respect of the suspect ego through up. positive reinforcement. It is very surprising to me, and it warms my heart, that you're the type of dad who can pack a bag in the morning. You know just what to put in there. You know just what to put in there as a backup in case they have an accident, okay? You know what the clothes to put in there. You know what they have for breakfast. You know what they have for a snack and a dinner and a nighttime snack. You can tell me the book you read to your daughters, okay? I know you love them. But you are not here today lying about something else. So we need to talk about that, okay? I know. First breakthrough. I, 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 I saw her, took my breath away, and I never thought in a million years that could happen. I, know. I never felt that way about anybody, like, anybody in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. I'm not proud of it. She accused me of it. I denied it. I, I actually just honored her, and I feel horrible for it. Like, she was pregnant, and it was. I don't want to. I didn't hurt her. You're doing a good job. This is the Chris that I knew would come out today. This is the Chris who tells the truth because you're a truth teller. I don't think this girl did anything to hurt anybody. When you leave her out of it, I'll okay. get back to your wife and your daughters. Okay. Where are they? That I do not know. That was what I was holding back. Like, I didn't know, like, Chris. what I did. Chris. I know, Chris, in the interview today. You weren't asked about infidelity. You were asked about that was I was oh, holding back from this last night. That's when you talk today. That's not how that works. Here's the challenge that we have. 
Oh my God. We knew about Mickey, and so we didn't need to ask you about her. Oh her. my God. We just didn't need to, because we knew, okay? And so that's why we didn't ask you, because we already knew the answer, okay? We're very, very worried about your daughters and your wife. I am too. This should have been the happiest time of your marriage, okay? You and Shanann. This should have been the happiest time. She's making a little money. She's making good money. You're making great money. You both have a job. You have beautiful kids. You have a beautiful house. You're in Colorado. Clean air. Good people. Okay? And on top of that, you look pretty good now. You're pretty fit. Okay? This should have been a time in your marriage where you guys were happy and thriving and productive. Okay? And I believe that Shanann's the reason none of that happened. This is called the how and why solution, a technique that allows the suspect to admit a lesser act and blame the victims, while at the same Happy time birthday, minimizing Michael. the crime and motivations of his actions. Happy birthday. I believe that she's a controlling person. Maybe doesn't listen to you as much as she should. Oh. I think that she can do whatever she wants and you can. Okay? I think if you were to go to a restaurant, she would order whatever the hell she wants. And as soon as you order a nice steak, she says, whoa, buddy, it's because you're a good person. And I think that she started on the path to leave the marriage. Okay. It's ironic that we're talking about you and Nikki. I think that she was the one who started on that path first. What? What do you think about that? I wouldn't have thought about that. The other thing I think is interesting is, even though she is that type of person that's controlling, doesn't listen, does what she wants, is walking away from her kids, here you are defending her. Because to your core, you want to take care of the people you love. Okay. And that's the reason why what? we want to give you an opportunity today to just help us find them. These people are on another level. Chris, right now your dad's outside. He flew across the country to help. Okay. You're lying to him. Don't lie to dad. You're lied to everyone you talk to. Oh my. They all bought it. Please help us find your babies. I want to find them. I've told you over and over. I want to find them. He's cracking. Can you understand that some of this just doesn't make sense to us? How is it possible that a woman and two kids are just completely gone off the face of the earth? I promise you, I have, your I have nothing on my happen. hands that I did nothing to those kids or her to make those them vanish. Kids. As the interrogation goes on, the constant and relentless psychological pressure essentially puts Chris at the edge of his ability to function cognitively. It's a slow and methodical process of breaking down his resistance while maintaining a balance of pugnacious and reassuring psychological techniques. Wow. I just, I just find it hard to hear you talk about with your kids having this emotional, you know, conversation with Shanann and you're bawling and crying together and you have not shed one tear in two days that you've been here. Oh, not one. True. And I totally understand that because I don't get it. You're, these are your baby girls. And you have not shed one tear. Not a single over them drop. Not being around. Chris, I, 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 I lose my four year old in the store for 10 seconds and I start to go panic. Panic. I have not seen any of that from you. At all. Help me understand that. I love those girls. I, I would never do any of this because I haven't shed a tear. You get yeah, no, that's weird. Is I, that I, weird? I, don't, don't look Sniffles into that. Like, I don't love my well, kids. Tell me, explain wife. to me. You're, you're crying with your wife that you're leaving her. Yeah. But you don't cry that you're two little baby girls. I'm hoping children. they're still around somewhere. I'm hoping they're still somewhere. In the next moments, you will see step seven of the Reed step interrogation. Step seven! Known as the alternative question, where the suspect is given an alternative and far more morally acceptable choice for what happened. How do they have yeah, these steps Shanann, memorized? No, I don't know. I'm serious. I have no clue. No, you wouldn't know. They didn't leave the house. Did Shanann do something to them, and then did you feel like you had to do something to Shanann? 
Oh, they, they were at the house when I left. They were there. They weren't there. They didn't leave. They vanished. You were the dead. only. That guy's like, oh, she's doing step seven right now. In your truck. Did she name you something? Something happened in the house that you know about. We know that something happened to all three of them. But I want to know did something happen to these baby girls first that you had to take into your own hands and deal with? You had to clean it up for Shania. Chris, you gotta tell us. There's something that happened to these baby girls. Look at them. I know. Before he came in, I was watching videos. We have no doubt you love these girls with all of your heart. I have no doubt. Um. But we make mistakes. That's okay. It's what we do with those mistakes that make us who we are. Because it seems like you're thinking about it right now. What are you thinking about? She could have. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. I'm, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I need to read that. Second breakthrough ceases outright, ceases outright denial. Okay. Wait. What did he say? Crazy. Seems like you're thinking about it right she now. What are you thinking about? She could have. I feel like you cleaned up for her. Alternate question. I feel like that's the type of guy that ego you are. up technique. Chris, this is a weight that's going to be on you. Social so exchange. This is the final blow. Unless we can talk about this more tonight. We're going to follow you forever. They're combining their powers. You, start talking to us, you will feel better. Chris, we're giving you a lifeline right now. You need to take it. You need to reach out and take it. Chris, you took them out of the house. Dossier technique. It's just because you cared. That's why Carrie got Two ego ups? Holy oh, shit! Shanann, or you made the mistake. Two! I mean, I want to believe that maybe Shanann did it and... His cerebral can't handle it! <laughs> ...fix this so Shanann didn't look bad. That's what I, that's what I want to believe. But I don't know, you're not telling me that, so... Makes oh, me it's over. Worse. Like, it's over for this guy. Did you? I did not do anything. All three of them? I like, did not do anything. What did Shanann do though? Tell us, Chris. Chicks are crazy. Can I talk to my dad or something? <gasps> Come on. Do you want to bring him in here? No, uh, I just can't talk to my dad. I flew across the country. He crashed in. How about this? If we brought your dad in here, would you please tell him what happened? And you need to realize that your dad is not going to stop loving you no matter what you tell him. You are his child. Wait, Dad's coming? And he will not stop loving you. What Never. technique is this? Ever. And this is not the last chapter in anyone's story. At all. Okay. It's not the last chapter. The last chapter is jail. Hey, Chris, we're going to let you have uh, however much time you need, okay? Sure. You going to leave us in there? Uh, yeah. Yes. Right. No. This uh, polygraph. Failed it. Failed it. Yeah, because it's just too much emotion. Anything else you want to tell me? What's, what's going on? What happened? What happened? What happened? When we had that conversation that morning, it was, you know, it was emotional and it was talking about separation and everything.
a pair re dola technique, hearing what he wants to hear. Oh, Dad. I feel so bad Reach. for the dad. Less than 10 seconds after the mention of the word lawyer, the detectives re-enter the room and immediately reinforce Chris with non-verbal empathic communication. They immediately divert Chris's attention from the well-informed advice of his father oh. to their own appreciative reception of his contemporary admittance. Wow! Dude! They are good! Less than 10 seconds they go in to distract them from that thought. Although not the full avowal they are pursuing, Chris has still confessed partly to the crimes, and they now have one foot in the door. He is no longer free to leave. The no longer free. The interrogation now returns to a non-suggestive process, where the detectives will collect further information, where they will not contaminate with excessive or direct input. Mm -hmm. I just did this, that, I just did that. 
What do I do? Right. You're in a tough spot. I mean, what can you do, right? Your body just kind of takes over. What's going to happen? We're going to help them get out of there. Chris, I know they're gone, but they're still your babies. And you're still their dad. And you don't want to go there. I don't want either. And you don't want someone else to find them out there. <laughs> you don't, I promise you. You give us a second to so get some things arranged. Can you do that? This is just fucking horrible. I've always said she was the most stable person, but I never thought that I needed a million years that could happen. Oh. She just lost it. Why did that happen to you? I want to know how they find out that he killed the kids. Wow, how long were they in there for? No, no, not tonight. Where about the Shanann and the girls? Shanann right there. The S for Shanann, okay. The Bad liar, yeah. But like, they need, they need like proof. So how did you do this out? Like how evidence. Did you under dirt? Right. How did you take that? So it's so old, but my truck is still with it. So it sounds like, I mean, it feels like to me, now we know pretty well how to go get them. Is there anything else we need to know? Can you think of that question? Let my family down. Let my dad down. Let my mom, sister, nephew, nieces, friends, co workers. Can I ask you another tough question? What about daughters? Is she, Shanann, choking, strangling, Celeste, and you get her off of Celeste? Did you think um, about calling an ambulance? Come. So I see you lying there blue and limp. Mm -hmm. I've never seen something like that in my life and she just like lay over like nothing was she wasn't moving at all no gas no breath uh, she was totally just after the baseline information of Chris's version of events is gathered, he is now locked into an alibi and timeline of affairs that forensics will subsequently examine and dissect in ways so they can use it against him. The tone of the interrogation then reverts back from information gathering to a confrontational nature. So Chris, you've been doing this job for a long time. I know. I, uh, I know a lot of about... I can't believe it's 10 p.m. and as far as, like, what people are thinking. Most parents will never even want to fathom that their kid, their kid is dead. Even if their kid's stiff, blue in bed, I mean stiff like been dead all night, they still call an ambulance to see if someone can revive their child. Mm -hmm. And they, when the ambulance get the, gets there and they're like, gosh, their kid's been dead all night, like there's nothing we can do. And the parents are like, what are you, why are you not doing something? What are you talking about? So that's what I'm, that's what we're used to. So I just, that's why I want you to explain to me like what was going on in your head and the very you know, last felt for what she was what she did. It just took over. I just I would hate for Shanann to get a bad rap. She didn't have anything to do with it. You know it's not fair. It's not fair. There is no technical term for this approach, yet it's a clear attempt by the detective to interconnect to the suspect's sense of morality, which is always under the assumption that they have any. What? She's, she invented a new technique. That's how advanced she is.
So you're good with the public knowing that Shanann killed her daughter? I did not hurt these girls. Are you okay with the public knowing that Shanann killed her Yeah, it's good. I did not hurt these girls. Chris, I'm not sure I believe you. Oh my god. Are you sure Shanann didn't catch you with anything like No, my god, no. Don't get mad. But what it looks like is that you found a new life, and the only way to get that new life was to get rid of the old one. Oh my gosh. And I think that you killed these girls before their mom came home. Chris pleaded guilty to these exact allegations two months later? And then killed Shanann. That's what we're kind of left, that's what we have to believe, because it just doesn't make sense. I mean, to her point, if I walked in and my kid was decapitated, I'd call an ambulance, mm -hmm. right? So Knowing there's no hope. It just, it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. It just doesn't add up. doesn't so add up. Either you're this monster, this yeah, girl, I just want this young, hot girlfriend, so I'm going to kill everyone and hope it works out, or something. So... I think we're very, very close to the truth, but not quite there yet. So if you're not that monster, I'm not a monster. So what's going to mm. happen when their cause of death comes back to you for the girls? Not going to. Okay. You sure? I'm 100% positive it's not going to come back to me. And what happens when a coroner looks and says sees your fingerprints on her neck? Oh. Okay. What is it going to be? It's going to be Shanann. Why take their bodies out of the house and bury them? I was scared. I didn't know what else to do. Okay. Nothing, nothing, nothing was going to, I didn't know what to do. Yeah. Scared. I honestly didn't know what to do. Scared of what? Scared of what everything was going to look like. There was, my two babies were gone, mm -hmm. and I, I just did that to my wife. And I was the only one left in the house. What do you expect is going to happen? Yeah. It did look bad, right? It looked, I mean, this was a nightmare. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yesterday when you were talking, um, and again, this is before we kind of got to this um, moment today, you mentioned that... Um, we were talking, he said, I don't know where they are, I don't know where they are, and then you said something along the lines of, whatever happened to him is act of pure evil. What does that mean? It's this it's the evil that I saw when I walked behind him and she was on top of the TV. And then I felt evil spread in this man. So after we, after we look at their bodies, we're going to have a lot more questions. Um, things are going to be different then. Oh my God, it's almost done. But if you're willing, we'd love to talk to you then too. Now that we know what we know, um, we're going to, um, I need to check that you don't have any weapons on you or anything like that. Do you have any weapons on you? Okay. Um, we'll do that. We'll go to the bathroom. I'm not going to go in the stall with you, but I'm going to go with you. Um, and then we'll come right back here and we'll make a decision about how the rest of the night goes. Oh All right, my so gosh. You might see it enough so I can check it. This interrogation was a true testimony of how mental fatigue can restructure an individual's cognitive rationale. Chris mm -hmm. maintained his innocence even after the failed polygraph, and if he had kept that stance, he would have walked out of that police department as a free man for at least another night. Yet wow. after a prolonged state of isolation, anxiety, and fear, coupled with the cerebral influencing tactics of the interrogators, the alleviation of getting out of that situation was in that moment perceived as enough of a luxury to exchange his freedom for. Wow. Chris, come stand up for me. I'm going to have you face that wall. Lift up your hands. What? Wait, what? That's it?